Gonzaga fans got our first look at Serbian forward Pavel Stosic against Eastern Oregon on Tuesday. We're going to discuss his background and potential role in Spokane on today's Locked On Zags podcast. You are Locked On Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On Zags podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host and longtime Gonzaga podcaster, Andy Patton, here to bring you news and updates on all things Zag athletics. Today's episode of Locked On Zags is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Folks, I promised you throughout the player preview series, for those of you who listen, those of you who are everyday listeners, thank you so much for making the show your first listen or your first watch of the day. We did a series previewing every single player on Gonzaga's roster, talking about their history, best and worst case scenarios for this upcoming season, and then a look ahead at their future in Spokane, potential NBA future, all that stuff. And throughout every episode, I promised you we would talk about every player on the roster. Well, there are four players on Gonzaga's roster that we have yet to talk about, so we are going to cover them today. I know we didn't get, they were supposed to be preseason previews, didn't quite get all of them done before the start of the Gonzaga basketball season, but it feels like a good time to round this thing out, talking about Serbian forward Pavel Stosic as well as Gonzaga's three walk-on players, especially because we got to see them in action on Tuesday night against Eastern Oregon, an absolute blowout victory for Gonzaga against an NAIA opponent. So we're going to talk about all those guys today, combining them all into one show. Uh, And we're going to start primarily talking about Stosic as the only scholarship player in this group. Guy, we saw eight minutes of action against Eastern Oregon. We're talking about what that means, who he is. Stosic is a six foot nine, two hundred and fifteen pound forward from Serbia, according to the Gonzaga website at six nine two fifteen. And it was reported that he is joining the team via an Instagram post from assistant coach RJ Barsh. Uh, back on September 23rd. I remember the day specifically because it was my birthday, and I don't think that there has been big breaking news regarding Gonzaga basketball on September 23rd pretty much ever. Usually my birthday is kind of a a safe day where I'm not expecting there to be any kind of breaking news, but of course I was out uh, in Bend, Oregon, celebrating with some friends and had to record a a little one-minute video about Stosic joining the team. Uh, It was that kind of off-season for Gonzaga. Luka Krinovich joined the team very late in the off-season. Marcus Adams came and went. Alex Tui uh, never really showed up. Caden Perry had the medical injury. Uh, It was just a, a very, very Long, 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 long offseason for Gonzaga. And the fact that Stosic committing to join the team uh, happened in late September is kind of more proof of that. A little bit about Stosic. He played three professional seasons in Spain prior to coming over to the United States. Two of them were with Zaragoza and the other one, and one of them was with the Zaragoza U18 squad. So kind of all in that same group. Uh, He played last year with CBB Huesca in the Spanish LEB League, made 16 appearances with that program, 3.4 points and 3.3 assists in those games. He also played in the FIBA U18 tournament in 2021, same tournament we saw Julian Strother, Chet Holmgren, Jun Sok Yo, of course, in that tournament as well. Uh, And Stosic played for Serbia, of course, in in 2021, Uh, 6.6 points, 4.2 rebounds, 1.4 assists in those five games. So not overwhelming numbers necessarily, but that Serbian team had a lot of talent on it, and and he managed to carve out a a productive role, uh, grabbing rebounds, distributing the basketball, uh, scoring some points as well. Uh, Moving on to talk about the history of Gonzaga's walk-ons as well. Like I said, we're kind of combining everything. I guess I'll mention Stosic played eight minutes in the scrimmage game, or not the scrimmage game, the uh, game against Eastern Oregon on Tuesday night. Uh, He had a pair of points and a pair, or he had a pair of uh, blocks 
uh, and a pair of points as well for Stosich in that contest. The walk-ons for Gonzaga, Colby Brooks is the most known out of the group, six foot seven forward from Los Angeles. He joined the team in 2021, but did not play in that first season. His first year uh, officially playing games for Gonzaga was 22-23. In that season, he played eight games, 23 total minutes, had 21 points, eight boards, and two steals, seven of nine on two pointers, one of two from deep, and four of five from the free throw line. He also had four points in 10 minutes against Eastern Oregon on Tuesday. Brooks, a guy that a lot of people have really enjoyed getting to watch in his small spurts of minutes, a guy who was an AAU player, actually played with Nick Kamenia. Fun fact, Kamenia, a four-star prospect in the class of 2025 that is heavily expected to commit to Gonzaga at some point. He's taken one unofficial visit and one official visit to Spokane for each of the last two craziness in the kennel events and was a teammate of Colby Brooks's back at AAU ball. Uh, other other walk on, of course, Joe Few, six foot point guard, uh, son of Mark Few. Not a surprise there. Not a secret. Played high school basketball at Gonzaga Prep in Spokane. Uh, he played in the 21-22 season. He played 13 games in 21 minutes, had a point, nine boards, and four assists. He was 0 of 9 from the field, wasn't able to knock down an actual field goal. He did get a free throw that season. He did not play at all last season. And then this year, he, of course, played uh, on Tuesday against Eastern Oregon, one of the more intriguing elements of that game. I know it. some people really enjoyed getting to see Joe Few play a lot more minutes. Some people, I think, uh, kind of rolled their eyes at it a little bit, uh, but Few came in in the first half came in in the second half, both around the under eight media timeout, ended up playing 13 total minutes, had three points, three steals, two assists, a board, and a block in that game. The block was the, for the final possession of the game, an incredibly fun, really stuff right in the guy's face. It was a very fun block for those of you who haven't watched the highlight. Uh, Mark Few talked about it after the game. It was a, a kind of a fun, goofy little thing. All three of his points in this game came from the free throw line, as well as Joe has yet to score an actual field goal in a Gonzaga basketball uniform. Uh, the final walk-on, and I apologize if I'm going to mess up his name, it's Joaquim Areas moore He goes by Q. He told me this in an Instagram post, so I'm going to refer to him as Q for the rest of the podcast. He's a six-foot-one freshman from Branson High School in Ross, California. Averaged 15 points per game in high school, and at one point in 2022 was the 23rd-ranked player in the Northern California area. So a, another one of those walk-ons, kind of like Colby Brooks, who has some pedigree, has some experience, has some played productive minutes in high school. So did Joe Few for what it's worth, but played solid minutes in high school in an area where there's a lot of concentrated basketball talent uh, in that Northern California area. Uh, Q did not play in the Eastern Oregon game. I, I believe he's the only player on Gonzaga's roster, uh, of course, outside of Steel Venters, who did not play uh, in that exhibition game. My suspicion is that he's probably redshirting. That is typically what happens. Uh, again, Joe Few did not play last year. Colby Brooks did not play in his first year. Uh, it's not surprising to see. There's a, there's a finite number of players that can play. I think Gonzaga could still be under that, but my guess is that more Q is not going to play at all this season. Uh, but again, I suppose you never know. So let's talk mostly about Pavel Stosic here. Is he going to get run this year? Mark Few mentioned that he had a concussion. That's why we didn't see him earlier in the season. So it's possible he might be somebody who gets more run throughout the year. And then could Colby Brooks step into a role? We've got some thin depth at the small forward position. Brooks is 6'7 and has been very productive, albeit only in garbage time throughout his college basketball career. Could this happen? We're going to talk about that after a word from today's sponsor, LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best and most qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which helps find the right people for your team faster. And they do it for free. It's honestly super easy to create a free job post. And then you just add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. From there, simple tools like screening questions make it easier to focus on candidates who have just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus those leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, folks, now is time for your game changer of the week. Brought to you by the Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Braden Huff so far this season for Gonzaga, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full of flavor, and well-crafted just like a full-strength beer. 
And after scoring 19 points in his debut against Yale Huffcroft, 23 points against Eastern Oregon in just 14 minutes, he has been one of the most productive players through his first two games in a Gonzaga basketball uniform of all time. Athletic Brewing has over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Golden Sours, and more. And the brews are fit for all times. You can drink them anytime, anywhere, and make any activity more enjoyable, including watching yourself a Gonzaga basketball game. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you, or you can buy them online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code LOCKEDON at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer. Exclusion and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. All right, folks, I want to thank all of you for making Locked On Zags your first listen or your first watch of the day. Shout out to those everyday listeners. Shout out to those of you who have joined us on our Discord channel as well. Free to join. Link in the show notes. You can talk Zags with us 24-7. Additionally, Locked On has launched their first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. On YouTube, Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. So just go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. You can just have it playing all day long, hearing from local experts from Locked On, your team, every day. All right, folks, we're into our second segment here on our preview episode or our, our player preview episode talking about Pavel Stoschitz and Gonzaga's three walk ons, Joe Few, Q, and Colby Brooks. As we've done with these best and worst case scenario segments, we talk about the best case within reason, the worst case without injury, of course. Best case within reason, every player's best case scenarios, national player of the year, hoisting that trophy at the end of the year. Clearly, that is not going to be a reasonable projection for any of these four players. With walk ons, it's obviously a little bit different in terms of what they're expected and asked to do. So, that's kind of more how we're going to focus on this conversation today. And we'll start with Stosich, of course, the one scholarship player in this group. Pavel Stosich's best case scenario this upcoming season is going to happen behind the scenes. That's kind of the case with a lot of players who are sort of outside of the rotation looking in. Like Luka Krinovich, a lot of his best case scenario is probably happening behind the same scenes. Same with Jun Sakyo. Like it's them developing and growing. And last year, same thing with Braden Huff. Like last year, I, I can't remember exactly what I said in the best worst case scenarios for Braden Huff when we did a player preview for him. But the best case scenario was him redshirting and developing extremely well behind the scenes. That happened. We are clearly seeing the fruits of the labor that Braden Huff put in going up against Drew Timmy every single night in practice last year. The best case scenario for Pavel Stosic is not something we necessarily see this year. It's that he gets to spend time in practice guarding Anton Watson, guarding Graham E.K., guarding Braden Huff, guarding Ben Gregg. Think of the experience that you get having to defend players who can shoot on the perimeter, having to defend left-handed low post scores, having to defend right-handed low post scores. Like the variety of players in Gonzaga's front court, A, is going to be very problematic for the teams that they play this year, but it also is going to dramatically help Pavel Stosic grow and develop as a player. We're not going to see that. So the best case scenario is that next year, if he has a bigger role, which all four of Gonzaga's bigs couldn't, or excuse me, Anton Watson's out the door. So there is going to be a spot for Stosic to potentially sneak into a role next year, depending on what happens in the transfer portal and, and various other things. But the best case scenario is that it's clear that the growth that happened this year, like that we, that the growth that we wanted to happen this year happened, that he improved and he, he learned the system. I mean, he got here in late September, folks. He, is, he hasn't even been here two months yet. He legitimately has not been in this program for two months, or for more than two months. He has so much learning to do, learning the offense, learning the culture, the language, all of that stuff, learning how to be a zag, how to be in the system offensively, defensively, all of that stuff. We're still seeing that players like Jun Sakyo are, are, are still learning that. Luka Krinovich, who only got here a few weeks before Stosic, still learning that stuff. So I think the best case scenario for Stosic is that that growth and development is happening behind the scenes in a way that we may not hear about until next year. At the end of this year, when they're interviewing Anton Watson, when they're interviewing uh, Braden Huff, Ben Gregg, whomever, and those guys are saying like, hey, look out for Pavel next year. Like he's going to be, you know, because that's what happened last year is Drew Timmy and Anton Watson and Julian Strother said, look out for big, for big B Huff. Braden's going to be a dude. 
they were right. So the best case scenario is that next year around this around March, April, May, when when, when Watson's going through the NBA draft process, when you know, when we're doing end of season interviews with with Huff and Greg and, and those guys, they're talking about Stosich as if he's going to be a bigger part of the future for Gonzaga the upcoming season. It's possible if if Stosich does not redshirt that we see some flashes from him in late game situations. He had a couple blocks against Eastern Oregon. Maybe we see some of those highlights, some some dis- distribution numbers. His passing skills were were very solid in in the professional leagues overseas. So maybe we see him him be maybe I don't want to say a full on point forward necessarily, but a big man who can pass the ball a little bit, who can block some shots. Maybe we see him hit some outside shots that gives us some excitement about what he can bring in the future. The best case scenarios for the walk-ons are, are, are a little bit more subdued. For Colby Brooks in particular, the best case scenario is that he gets a scholarship. Same way Matthew Lane got a scholarship uh, in his second semester. I think it was his senior year. I believe this is Brooks's senior year as well. Uh, so he gets a scholarship. He gets to be put on, on scholarship. Uh, it's a big celebration. There's a nice little social media post about it. Like that's the best case scenario for Colby Brooks. Uh, beyond that, he continues to play well in garbage time. I mean, he's barely missed any shots in his Gonzaga basketball playing career. Uh, maybe he gets some first half minutes. I mean, this team's depth is a bit concerning. If if uh, Dusty Stromer gets in foul trouble, maybe there is a situation where Colby Brooks comes in for the last couple minutes of the first half of a game to just soak up some minutes and and play, you know, not turn the ball over and be a, a presence for Gonzaga where he doesn't hurt the team in a significant way and allows Dusty to rest, allows him to not pick up a, a third foul, something like that. Uh, some highlight dunks, a taco, you know, winning the team a taco with the tenth three pointer of the game. Those are always the things you want to see from those walk ons. Same with with. Few. For for Joe Few, the best case scenario is that he scores a dang field goal, that he does not end his Gonzaga basketball career with only scoring points from the free throw line, that he hits a three. The best case scenario for Joe Few is that he hits a three. Ideally, that he hits a three that wins the crowd tacos. That would be the pinnacle moment for Joe Few. The camera would 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 go right to Mark, and he'd be trying to hide a smile. It'd be a wonderful moment. Hopefully, we get to see that for Joe Few. And then for Q, it appears he's redshirting again. We don't know for sure, but the best case scenario for him is that he's pushing players in practice. He's getting good grades. He's he's contributing to the team in a positive way. Because walk-ons, if you're contributing to the team in a negative way, you're just you're gone. Like you're not you're not going to last very long. You know, Mark Few is not going to put up with a player who's who's got attitude issues, academic issues, anything like that. If you're a walk-on, so the best case scenario for Q is that he does all that stuff right. He works hard in practice. He's pushing the other guards. Uh, he's getting good grades. He's a good ambassador for the program. And maybe he earns some maybe he earns some garbage time minutes. Maybe not this year. Maybe next year. Maybe he goes the, the route of Brooks or Lang or, or those guys and ends up getting a scholarship with Gonzaga in a couple of years. Worst case scenarios, there's, it's hard to find a lot of worst case scenarios here. For Stosich, it's really just that that development isn't happening. It's the opposite of what we said in the best case scenario. And I hate saying negative things about Martinez Orlowskis because he was one of my favorite Gonzaga players. I loved his energy, his enthusiasm coming off the bench. But he is the example of sometimes you go grab guys internationally and they just don't develop enough to carve out a significant role. Martinez never got a real role. He never really got the opportunity, but that's presumably because the the growth, the development that they wanted to see from him didn't happen in a way where he was better than the other players on the roster. For Stosic, there's a lot of really good players in the front court, and the worst case scenario is that he doesn't do enough to carve out those minutes. And again, maybe next year he's the fourth. I don't think there's this expectation that he is all of a sudden, you know, I mean, not everybody's going to be Braden Huff where they redshirt for one year or play very little for one year and then explode in their sophomore season or for Braden, his redshirt freshman season. That's unusual. So even if Stosich is like the fourth big next year or even still not in the rotation, that doesn't necessarily mean that things are going awry. It just means that he's not quite there yet. Again, he just joined the team. So I think it's reasonable to expect that it might take longer than just this season for him to fully be ready. For the rest of the walk-ons, I guess Brooks not getting a scholarship would be a worst case scenario for him. Uh, It's just not helping the team in other ways, not doing the dirty work in practice, not uh, representing the program well academically, stuff like that. That'll get you kicked off the team in a a quick way. I imagine that Brooks and Fuse, having been here for a couple of years, that's not going to be an issue for them. Uh, Gonzaga not getting in a a lot of blowout games means less playing time for them. I suppose that's a worst case scenario for, for them. It's certainly not a great scenario for Gonzaga either. The more these guys play, the likely... Uh, the less Ryan Nemhart has to play, the red, more ready some of those guys are for March. Uh, so I think it would be a worst case scenario if these guys got less playing time this year, but hopefully there will be plenty of opportunities still in the non-conference with a couple of SWAC opponents and, of course, some conference games as well where these guys should get some run late in the game. 
Well, what does the future hold for Pavel Stosic in a Gonzaga uniform? We're going to talk more about that after a word from today's sponsor, Prize Picks. Folks, Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like their Taco Tuesday deals. Every Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide you with even more value. And with the Price Picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for NFL games and college football top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and they do not return in the second half, that player is rebooted. Folks, Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. This is unprecedented in that daily fantasy space. Seriously, this app is also so easy to use. All you do is pick two or more players and you choose more or less with whatever given stat. So if you think Chet Holmgren is going to score more points than Price Picks, you think they're going to he's going to have more blocks than Price Picks, you hit too high, you he does so, you get paid. Literally that simple. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college, use that promo code locked on college, and you get a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use that promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Price picks, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, folks, closing out the show today, talking more realistic role expectations as well as the future for these four players, starting with Pavel Stosic. He can still redshirt. And I've mentioned this a handful of times on the show. I suspect there are people listening who are like, he played. He, I mean, it wasn't an exhibition game against Eastern Oregon. That was a legitimate, scheduled, regular season game for Gonzaga, and Pavel Stosic played. He can still redshirt by my understanding of it. I believe you are allowed to play four games, and they have to be early in the season. If you don't play till middle of the season, you play four games, then it's a lot harder for the NCAA to grant you a redshirt. But theoretically, Pavel Stosic could still redshirt this season. I don't know if you will. Again, Mark Few after the game talked about how Stosic had suffered a concussion. That was why he was held out in the Lewis Clark exhibition game, presumably why he was held out against Yale, although I don't know that he would have played in that game regardless. But it seemed to indicate that potentially Stosic is not being – being prepared for a role where he redshirts. That's a little surprising to me. I don't know behind the scenes what's going on. There's clearly this team isn't doesn't have as many bodies as they've had in the past, but Stosic just joined the roster. He's still acclimating to college basketball, to the United States, to college in general, to Gonzaga's offense, Gonzaga's defense. The Zags have more depth in the front court than they've had since 2017. It doesn't feel like a, a season where the Zags need Stosic to play. Like, it doesn't feel like he's going to play much. Again, I'm not going to try to read too much into the minutes distribution in that Eastern Oregon game, but, like, both Colby Brooks and Joe Few played more minutes than Pavel Stosic. Does that mean they're fully ahead of him on the depth chart? Eh, probably not when push comes to shove, but it makes sense to me for Stosic to redshirt. And if we don't see, we won't see him in Maui, most likely. If we don't see him when we play the Jackson States, the Mississippi Valley States, the Cal State Bakersfields, if we don't see him in those games, I think that that's probably our answer in terms of him redshirting. But maybe he will. Maybe he will play in some garbage time minutes there. Maybe Gonzaga does view him as somebody who isn't going to be here for five years anyway, for whatever reason. And they think, hey, let's just get him, get him some minutes, get him some run, get him some opportunity to get more comfortable, more familiar with the system so that he can be more ready to be a contributor, maybe as soon as next year. Maybe they do view him as like, hey, you know, Huff's going to step into a starting role if EK comes back, Greg's the third big, Stosic is the fourth big. Like maybe that's something that they view as the plan for next year. Maybe it's just an insurance policy. Maybe they just want him to to be available for them this year. So something to keep an eye on for for Stosic in particular. I I think if he doesn't redshirt, he's still not going to play many minutes. It's still garbage time. Like, there's not a rotation spot for Pavel Stosic this year. There shouldn't be. Um, he's not ready for that, I don't think, just based on how soon he got into the system. Uh, there's not a space for him. Again, he's a, he's a four. He, he's a four or a five. Uh, maybe he can play more three. I, I would be surprised if he could play three this year, just again because of his uh, how recently he, he joined the program. His assist numbers were pretty good. Maybe there's more of a point forward type thing to his game, but again, wouldn't expect to see much from him this year. Q, I expect to redshirt. Uh, obviously, Brooks and Few do not appear to be redshirting. I think they're going to be the, the traditional end of the bench walk on guys, the Rem Bacchamises, the Matthew Langs, the Jack Beaches, whomever it may be. That's kind of the role that they're going to fill. Brooks, they've both been filling that role already for the last couple of years. 
And in terms of the future, again, with the walk-ons, probably here until they graduate, you, some guys end up, you know, leaving the program and staying at school. That's what Abe Eagle did last year. So who really knows what's going to happen there? Uh, we hope that Brooks will get a scholarship. That's kind of one of the future things to keep an eye on with the redshirt group. But really, Stosic is the one that's the most intriguing in terms of what his future looks like. And it's really hard to say. We just don't really know what the Zags have here yet. Is he somebody who could conceivably be more of a 3-4 hybrid? Is he locked into being a big man? Is he? Does he have an outside shot? Uh, are the passing numbers that we've seen from him legitimate. What does he look like defensively? He had a couple blocks against Eastern Oregon, but I don't know that that means a ton yet. He looked active defensively. He looks very athletic. Even in the in that craziness in the kennel exhibition, some of his jumping, I mean, he's he's an athlete. The dude can move. So I think there is plenty of intrigue. He's just so new and so raw and, and you know, so fresh to the program that it's really hard to to pin down a whole lot of, of, of what Gonzaga has. Mark Few knows a heck of a lot more than we do because he's seen him in practice. We just haven't seen him pretty much at all outside of a handful of minutes in the exhibition or in the craziness scrimmage, a handful of minutes here against Eastern Oregon. But again, he's, he's a player that I would expect to see very little this year and that I think would probably have a very small role next year. I also wouldn't be shocked if after Watson leaves, Gonzaga adds a front court player via the transfer portal. If EK Huff and Greg all come back, they add somebody in the portal. That's probably limits the role that Stosic might even have in year two. So maybe not a guy we see a ton of for the next couple of years, but somebody who obviously Mark Few believes in. Obviously RJ Barsh believes in. He went out and got him. So there's clearly something there. How he develops is not something we're going to see until we see him actually starting to get minutes. Or, you know, if it's an Arlowski situation or Pavel Zakharov situation where they just never get those minutes and they either leave the program or they just end up being or he ends up being a guy who, who spends a lot of time on the bench and, and you know, maybe takes on that that uh, Arlowski role as an enth enthusiasm guy, energy guy who, who kind of is on the bench for the majority of the time. So it's just hard to know. It's hard to know. So this is the most difficult player on the roster to project because he hasn't been here very long and we haven't seen a whole lot from him. There's not a lot of tape on him. There's not a lot of information about his career in, in Europe up to this point. So he's he's a pretty big wild card, but somebody that I think is definitely worth keeping an eye on and remembering because, again, we saw him in this exhibition game or in this – I keep calling it an exhibition game. We saw him in this game against Eastern Oregon, and, and that doesn't mean nothing. It, it certainly means that Mark Few has at least some level of belief in him being able to to be a player in this program. Again, probably not this year, but, but maybe as soon as next year, certainly uh, after that. That's going to wrap us up for today here on the Locked On Zags podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen or your first watch of the day. Make sure you smash that like button, leave us a comment or a review on iTunes. Definitely join the Discord channel if you have not done so yet. It is free to join. Link in the show notes. We got game threads. We're talking all things Zags 24-7 in that channel there. Again, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, as always, go Zags.